have a supersized review for you guys. Hey guys, welcome to Chris Mack. In this review, I have this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum. Sliding between the regular Highlander and the Sequoia, it's perfectly in the middle. I'm gonna show you the different features, take it on the drive, and give you guys my final verdict. But let's go ahead and get into this review, shall we? Let's go. Looking on the outside of the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum, this is your key fob right here. You do have lock, unlock, as well as a trunk release and a panic button with the Toyota logo right there inscripted on the bottom of the key fob. But as equipped, this vehicle is about $56,000. It is dressed in a midnight black exterior with a light gray interior. Looking at the front end design or front fascia of this Grand Highlander, you can see it definitely does have a lot of RAV4 styling in the front end of this vehicle. I do like the chrome trim that does go across the entire width of the front side of the vehicle. You have fill LED lighting. Your daytime run lights are this little light bar up top, as well as your turn signals over here on this side. You do have LED low beams right there with your high beams right there and also LED fog lights further down below. This has the full suite of Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which you will try on the road in a second. You can also see the 360 camera as this is the fully loaded platinum trim. Coming around to the wheels, this is a 20 inch wheel with a chrome finish wrapped in all season tires. You do have power folded mirrors with 360 camera and your LED turn signals right there. Keyless entry is for all four door handles. Aluminum roof rack up top and a panorama sunroof, which I will show you guys in a second. In the third lineup, this sits between the Red Highlander and the Sequoia. Coming around to the rear of the Grand Highlander, you can also see a little bit more of this RAV4 styling, specifically with the tail lights. They are full LEDs, so your LED reverse lights are right here with your LED turn signals and brake lights and your running light up top. I do like that Grand Highlander is kind of hidden right here in plain sight. It's actually the same color as the exterior of this vehicle. It looks so nice. So you have your all-wheel drive badging over here on this side and the platinum badging over here. Let's check out trunk space. Tailgate is powered, of course. Now looking behind the third row, you'll find 21 cubic feet of space. If you do fold down the third row seating by using the strap right here and this button right there to Basically close it and pull it back up. It'll expand to about 58 cubic feet of space. You do have a JBL subwoofer right there. Some all weather floor mats in this box. Let's see what else we got. And some more storage down below. The seats do fold down in a 60-40 fashion as well. Closing the tailgate, you can lock the doors as well as close the tailgate or just lock the tailgate right there. And boom but now let me show you guys under the hood of the Grand Highlander they do have several engines offered for the 2024 model year this is the regular platinum version you also have a platinum hybrid max version as well got the prop rod right there whoo it's hot but looking at the powertrain of this Grand Highlander, as a 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder, makes 265 horsepower with 310 pound foot of torque. You'll get 20 in the city, 26 on the highway, and 22 combined. Vehicle weighs about 4,575 pounds. Does go to the HP automatic to all four wheels. Now, if you go for the Platinum Hybrid Max version, that will increase horsepower by nearly 100 to 362 horsepower and it actually gets 27 mpg combined in a three row suv which is crazy we'll go ahead and shut that we show you guys the window stick over here damn i gotta say i'm doing pretty good this is on one take go ahead chris you got this but um, this is your window sticker right here. You can see all the various different options. I will put all this in the description below as well. MSRP is $55,981. All this does come standard. I'll get a three quarter front view for you guys before you hit the interior. 
boom. But now let me show you guys the interior of the Grand Highland. Also I want to point out two gas tankers over here on, on the driver's side as well. We we're gonna start out in the third row. I was gonna go through the pass-through, but I'll show you guys the little release over here. You have a couple of controls. This one right here slides the seat forward, and then this one folds the seat. And you can also hit this button right here and it'll slide the whole seat forward. So if I pull this, move it forward, and you slide the seat, and let's hop on there. Stepping inside of the third row, I have the seat mostly back at five foot six. I barely have about a quarter of an inch. Now, as far as headroom goes, headroom, I have about maybe an inch and a half of headroom. It's not too bad to be honest, but um, you can also have your release right here when nobody's sitting right there, you can release it right there. You have a USB-C port on both sides, so you do have pretty good amenities. Some air vents up top with LED illumination. But let's go ahead and hit the second row, which is probably a little bit more comfortable. Sitting behind myself in the second row of the Highlander or Grand Highlander. I have the seat adjust for my frame at about five foot six, a little bit further back than typical, but I have literally about five to six inches of legroom. As far as headroom goes, I have plenty of headroom, it's about two, maybe two and a half inches of headroom is plenty. You also do have LED illumination up top with some air vents, manual sunshades as well. Automatic windows back here. They have a little bit of sitching right there. This gray interior. Speaking of climate control functions back here, you have three stage heated and cooled second row seats, two USB C ports, one on this side and that side. Single zone climate control back here. So it's basically three zones. So it's two up front and then one back here. You also have a AC 120 volt charger right there, household outlet, and map pocket right here with storage on both sides. Panoram sun will let in a lot of light, but sitting back here is fairly comfortable. Got your armrests right here, which are adjustable, and two cup holders. But let's go and hit the driver's seat or the cockpit of the Grand Highlander where all the action happens. Of course, they're cutting the grass, but looking at the driver's seat of the Grand Highlander, you can see you do have your power seat controls with a two way lumbar support back and bottom support with two person memory. All windows are automatic. Power folding mirror functions are right there. Got a little bit of this faux wood trim which looks so nice. Really does spruce up the cabin when you look at it around the whole interior. A Little bit more of this light gray interior. Hood releases right there with your gas tank and you have a little storage compartment. Automatic high beams are right here with your single stage heated steering wheel and your trunk release as well as cluster illumination. You have a manual tilt and telescoping steering column as well. Stepping height is pretty good with this Grand Highlander, definitely very family friendly. But looking in front of you, you have this three spoke steering wheel, which as I stated before is heated with that button over here on this side. You have paddles behind the wheel to control the HP automatic. Your light controls are over here on this side with your wipe controls on that side. And then this is basically how you configure your 12.3 inch cluster right here in front of you. Use the various different functions right here to toggle through. But this is basically how I have it customized. So I have my miles per gallon on this side, driver assist as well as all wheel drive on that side. You also have your speed, cruise control and driver assist is over here on this side of the steering wheel. We will try out the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. But um, you got your volume control, telematics, and as I stated before, you can basically configure and change the screen between infinite different views but this is basically how I have mine set up right there. Also, I want to talk about too, being the platinum trim or the fully loaded trim, you have a 10 inch head up display right here in front of you. So I have my speed as well as lane assist information in your gear. You'll also get your speed limit in your area when you are on the road. Looking at the center console of the Grand Highlander, you can see the main star piece of this infotainment is the new 12.3 inch Toyota Connect infotainment. 
I do want to start out with a quick Apple CarPlay test and try out the 11 speaker JBL sound system. Keep in mind wireless CarPlay and Android Auto is standard, so let's try it out. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'm a as you can see, the 11 speaker JBL sound system has a lot of bass and sound quality. Definitely is impressive, and I would say it's right on level with offerings from Bose. But look a little bit more at the infotainment. Hit to go back to your main page. You got your Apple CarPlay connectivity right there. Your navigation, which is subscription based, which honestly I'm not surprised as phones can definitely do navigation a lot quicker than embedded nav. But um, your radio functions right here. You do have AM, FM, Sirius XM radio. Once you change the various different sources right there. Phone connectivities, which I showed you guys a second ago. Your vehicle settings are right here. You can configure your climate control. Your rear climate control, you can also lock it as well. And you have your various different options right there. Trip information, vehicle alerts, your different settings right here inside of the infotainment screen. So you have your general settings for like clock and stuff. You also do have built-in Wi-Fi display settings right there. You can change the brightness. You can have the response be even quicker, contrast, and so on. More camera settings right there. Sounds immediate right there. You can configure the 11 speaker JBL sound system to your liking. You can maybe add a little bit more treble, bass, mid range if you're really an audiophile. Under vehicle customizations, you can configure everything between your light settings as well as illumination. So it does have a little bit of ambient lighting at nighttime. It's one color, it's gonna be like a light blue, but it'll come like little accents right around the center console area, around the foot wells, and it just looks so nice. But um, you can definitely put down max brightness and it'll look nice at nighttime. Though I do wish it had multicolor, but um, small gray. More climb controls, utility functions, updates, dealer information, built-in apps, and so on. But that's basically the infotainment. You also do have a physical volume knob right here on this side. And your physical buttons for your climb control is right under the screen. So you do have three stage heated and cooled front seats. Dual zone climb control for both sides. You can sync it as well with your fan speed in the middle. Window defrost and other climb control functions right there. Two air vents right there. But coming further down, you have a push button start right there to turn the engine on. A USB-C port. This is for connectivity to the infotainment. And you do also have another USB-C port just for charging. And a 360 camera button right there. So I'll show you guys that. When you do put it on, it'll give you a sweep around the entire vehicle. You can also put it into a outside view right there. You got settings for that, so you can actually change the color of the vehicle. You know what? I'm going to do the owner a favor of this vehicle. I'm going to change it to black for them. Boom. There we go. But you got the full suite of 360 camera right there with plenty of different views. I'll show you guys that a little bit more in a second once we get down to the gear shift. But you do have a wireless charging pad right there. Put my phone on that. Charges up just fine. A little bit more storage right here for your phone. And I mean, this thing has plenty of storage inside. Look at the cup holders right here. It's huge. Big storage compartment right here. Literally goes down deep. But this is your gear shifter right here. Push back one for reverse, where you have a 360 camera with trajectory lines. You change your different settings, different views, wide angle, narrow angle. You can also change the trajectory lines. You can also clean up the uh, front view camera and put it on automatically when you are driving. You see right there, it's actually cleaning the rear wiper, which is so cool. But um, you got other settings right there, neutral drive. And then when you're in drive, you can also put on the 360 camera as well. You can have a auto mode where you are at low speeds under, I believe, 10 to 8 miles an hour. It'll come on automatically. And then you also have parking sensors both front and rear. Manual mode is over here on this side. You have a parking brake right there with a auto hold function. Auto start stop defeat as well as trash control. Also flanked on this side is a snow mode with a hail assist function. Looking right here is how you configure your all-wheel drive system. So let me show you guys the different modes between a mud, sand, and a rock dirt and then normal on-road. So I'm going to toggle it and you'll see the graphics side of the screen. So you got the mud, sand, 
you got the rock dirt and I push down for normal so it's like a normal cluster but I do like how it actually changed the modes you see it turns off the trash control automatic braking and all that but the graphics look so good but we're going to leave that back in normal speaking of drive modes you have a eco mode over here on this side your sport mode on that side and then let me show you guys the center console you have a little slide door with a 12 volt charger right there there's plenty of storage literally goes all the way down you get a better angle for you guys boom look at that like my hand is just down there you also do have a little tray right here as well and a little coin holder back here looking up top you do have a sunglass holder with LED illumination this is your shade right here to open up the panorama sunroof while that's open let me show you guys you have your telematic and SOS information up top with illumination for the interior you can also tilt the sunroof open or you can slide it open and close it back right there using these buttons and controls have a auto dim rear view mirror with a digital camera back here which definitely does help with visibility in a vehicle of this size with garage door openers right there you can also change the various different views and change everything right there and angles and so on when using the little buttons right here so basically for your settings you can toggle over and configure all that right there so right now we're at the angle so you can angle it up you can angle it down just use these three buttons right here on this side but let's go ahead and take the grand highlander for a drive and see how she does we are behind the wheel of the 2024 toyota grand highlander platinum let's go ahead and talk about visibility out the front and rear sides it's very good like i see overly hood as well as out the side mirrors and even out the back and also one more thing too boom digital camera mirror up top definitely does help aid with visibility but just driving around in eco mode the hp automatic is very smooth shifting and definitely is in the background You see right there the auto start stop shuts down no problem at all and i have to say it's seamless firing back up could be a little bit smoother but for a toyota product it's pretty good also what i do like about this grand highlander first setting off is this 12.3 inch cluster right here in front of you and which is also aided by this 10 inch headlight display in front of my line of sight so i have my gear information you see right there, if I put it in manual mode, it actually change the different manual mode functions right there. You have your speed as well as your driver assist information as well. Very intuitive and easy to use. But this 12.3 inch cluster, I like the amount of configurability that you do have with this. You can change everything between your settings and so on. You see all your driver assist information. Oh, look, there's a Highlander, but we got the Grand Highlander. <laughs> One thing I also did want to point out too, which I didn't talk about in the end of the walk around was over here, the glove box, which is a pretty good size. And you do have a little tray right there as well as another USB-C port for charging over there. But I like this wood trim though. It really does just make this interior pop. And as for drive modes, you basically have Eco, in sport right there on that side you see right there the configure the uh, cluster right here just changes the graphics to go red just looks so cool you can literally see a hint of red right there but i'm um, just leaving the eco for a minute now how is seat comfort seat comfort is pretty good one thing i do want to point out too all the seats are perforated in this grand highlander you also have heating and cooled seats for both the first row and the second row which is nice you also have a heated steering wheel as well Ride quality isn't too bad. This is a pretty choppy road. These have the 20 inch multi spoke wheels with a chrome finish, but I have to say, road imperfections are pretty good with this vehicle. I'm gonna go 
mode and sport mode for a minute. Maybe we can go traction off. There we go. Try a quick acceleration. Once the light turns green. Look at that. All the start stop. No problem. Just, just smooth. Do a slight brake boost and see how good the acceleration is. There's 60 miles an hour right there. So this has the 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder makes about 265 horsepower with 310 pound foot of torque. Zero to 60 felt about the low seven second range. Definitely not a sporty vehicle, but I mean, that's obviously not the mission of this vehicle. Put it back in the eco for a minute. But um, you also do have a Grand Highlander Platinum Max hybrid version, which makes 362 horsepower and actually bumps up miles per gallon to 27 combined. Now this one is rated at about 22, so that's about a five MPG increase right there. But that will also tick up weight as well. Might as well throw an adaptive cruise as we chill behind these people, but um, we'll go ahead and throw that on. So I have it set to like 45, and I'll put the following distance down to two. And then have my lane keeping assist with steer assist as well. This does have Toyota safety since 3.0, so it's a slight improvement versus other generations of Toyota products, a little bit more advanced. I do also like the lane keeping assist as well, it's a little bit more aggressive and keeps you in your lane. We'll go ahead and turn that off. I did find one small gripe though when using the adaptive cruise just now is that it kind of gets to be like a whole clutter of different functions and stuff when you have that on and you put the lane keeping on so it's just a whole bunch of stuff sport mode look at the graphics look at that it's just great got my cool seats going We gotta do one more acceleration. So in sport mode, I'm gonna brake boost the traction zone. And as stated before, definitely more than enough power.
right, let's hit the highway. As you can see right there, the adaptive cruise control works pretty well. I have it back on. I don't know why they have this button over here on this side, man, he's all, but um, you got this button right here to change your driver assist modes right there on that side, which is kind of redundant with this button, but the lane keeping assist, let's try that out. You see right there, it'll flash, it'll give you all the different flashes and everything and tones and all that when you do veer over your lane. And it will also pull you back as well. But let's see how the passing power is if you need to get around traffic. <laughs> and like that, you're out of the hole. No problem at all. This little thing right here also does scan your face as well. So like every time I'm trying to sit up, I'm like, hey, I'm doing a POV over here. <laughs> but the cabin's pretty hushed and quiet, though. At highway speed, is going about 70-ish miles an hour or so. Pretty hushed and quiet. It's really impressive. I hear you tell you to say sit up like every two seconds, but uh, we see that's also another feature too. Is a Toyota feature. So you say Toyota, and it just like does a like, voice recognition. So we say Toyota. Oh, now I don't want to work. <laughs> but yeah, you see right there, all the start stop kicked in, no problem at all. But I do want to go ahead and get to the conclusion of what I think about this. Grand Highlander as we get a little bit closer to the dealership or once the light turns green. I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about that, but just sitting here, see she's just fine, pretty comfortable. Highly recommend checking one out in person. But um yeah. Light turns green, 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 green. I'm thinking my rap days. <laughs> cruise again and like I stated the adaptive cruise works pretty well as using the camera up top to follow the traffic in front of it with about three following distances you can expand it out to four or decrease it down to one Increase your speed right there. But as we get a little bit closer to the dealership, I'm gonna get to the conclusion of what I think about this Grand Highlander. Now, overall, I like the package that this vehicle does offer. Now, as equipped, this vehicle is about $56,000. So you have your head-up display, your heated and cooled seats, the 360 camera here. Let me show you guys that while we're driving. You see, it kind of has like this little invisible look, right? It's like the uh, Invisible Man movie. There we go. You see the car popped up, but it's literally like TV graphics the way it is. You can put it on a automatic mode when you're going forward and drive. So the 360 camera is great as well. But the features, everything this offers is a solid product. And I also do like the outside styling of this. They, I can see a little bit of RAV4, a little bit of regular highlander in the mix as well so it's not like 
kind of the same. They use kind of the best elements of both worlds. So you got, also got heated seats, automatic headlights, and this fake kind of forward wood trim right here really does add a little bit more into the interior of this vehicle. Dual zone climate control. You also have a climate control in the second row seats as well with heating cool seats. You got manual sunshades and driver This actually works pretty well. It's definitely solid and up there. Center console with pretty good storage and then your different drive modes and your terrain selections right there. And one other thing too I want to point out now is it kid friendly? That's the main thing because it's a three row SUV. Third row seating is pretty good as well as the second row. Now keep in mind I'm about five foot six and even if let's say you put someone up to five foot eight you can fit comfortably behind someone in the first row five foot eight, second row five foot eight and in a pinch maybe for someone five foot six in the third row but yeah that's all i really have to say about the 2024 toyota grand highlander and also too you have plenty of charging ports around the interior cabin got one right there 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 everywhere so you're definitely covered and plenty of storage that's probably one of the things i do notice with this grand highlander is the amount of storage right here in the center console with the wireless charging pad i mean you have endless storage for your drinks and all of that but um that is going to wrap up this video this is Chris signing out.